So the typical traditional method of drying cannabis, whether that's hemp or marijuana, is to hang dry. And that's a lot of what my past life was, um, was hang drying large amounts of cannabis. Um, so from my experience, hang drying is a significant space requirement. I've seen anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 square feet per acre. So this is not something that's very scalable. <clears throat> it definitely has some pretty significant time requirements as well. I've seen anywhere from seven to 21 days. You definitely don't want to do it any faster than seven days because you'll see a definite decrease in the quality of your product. It gets really dry and crumbly and starts to kind of smell like hay. Um, so it's a very fickle process. And I mean, 21 days, that's kind of a long time for, you know, a lot of time for things to go wrong, unfortunately. Um, this method also only dries batches at a time. So like Matthew and I said, we came from a facility that was in constant production. So we were on a rotation. So every two weeks, I harvested over two, uh, 2,500 plants every two weeks and hung dried every single one of them. And um, I mean, we like to joke here at IEC that there's not enough arms and barns for where the hemp industry is going. You know, it's a really great process and it's ideal for smokable or widely accepted or considered the best for smokable flour. Um, but if you're going for anything other than smokable, I do not recommend looking into this, um, looking into this method very seriously, at least. Well, like as Shauna mentioned, mentioned earlier, you can still take a little portion of your, of your crop and turn that into a smokable product. I would encourage you to grow it as if it's a smokable product. I mean, <clears throat> what we certainly seen last year is a lot of people that grew biomass and then the biomass price went away. And so now they're trying to sell their biomass as smokable flour and it has somewhat questionable quality. But, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys are learning that, that you can grow this hemp plant year round. You can grow it in greenhouses. You can get constant harvests out of it and you can produce really good smokable flour. But how you dry and cure that is a much different process. And even at 2,500 plants, takes 12 to 15 people to do it successfully. <laughs> um, you know, so it, it's definitely something that, you know, you, if you're really thinking about, and there are guys out there that advise people to still kind of use this methodology. If it's going into extraction, if it's going into something like that, the, the extraction doesn't care. <laughs> um, and there's nothing to be really be gained out of it. So, um, like Sean says here, it's really not scalable. Exactly. And another thing too is it's very unreliable and inconsistent. The whole process behind hang drying is air circulation, is constantly moving air around. Um, so when I was in my dry room hanging, I would be rotating my fans, I would be rotating my dehumidifiers, you know, consistently I was moving those around. If you leave them in any one place for too long, you'll see that the plants around your fans or dehumidifiers will get really, really crispy dry. Meanwhile, the plants that are a little bit further from your fans and your dehumidifiers will still be wet, essentially. So it's very inconsistent, very unreliable. Um, and it can be dangerous as well. I'm sure we saw last year, there was a lot, lot, lot of articles about hang drying hemp barns that had actually caught fire. You know, there's a lot of heat in those buildings. There's a lot of electricity going around. And those old tobacco barns were not built for hemp drying. You know, they work for tobacco, but they don't work for hemp. They aren't ready for that electrical load. So we have seen, I would say, probably about 10 different hemp barns burn to the ground with all of the product in it. Um, so it can definitely be dangerous. Fire is a very real hazard. Anytime you're talking about heat or electricity, um, just some things to think about. So it can definitely be dangerous. And the last thing you want to do is lose your entire crop. Yeah, and as Shauna mentioned earlier, you know, all this great stuff that you hang dry, once it's hung dry, it's now incredibly brittle, but you're not done handling it. You've got to get it off the stem. You've got to get, you know, get it through several more steps. So I always try to, you know, you're not done. And if you're creating a smokable flower, once you're done hang drying it, then you got two more weeks of curing it, <laughs> where you're going through a daily process of, you know, burping or opening that product to allow it to off gas the chemical reactions that are still happening in there. If you don't do that, then you end up with the stuff that smells like hay. So, uh, you know, it, it's, 
it's seven to 21 days of drying. It's another 14 days of curing. That's great if you're going to get a certain amount of money for it in a jar as a smokable flower. But if it's going to end up being hammer milled and put into a giant ethanol bath, Mm-hmm. And that's not the place to put your put your effort. You need to be thinking about a bigger process. And we we I know we probably will get into this a little bit more, but the I think the most heartbreaking stories that we hear are really the really smaller producers, the guys that try to be somewhat conservative and plant 10 acres or eight acres, which still seems like a lot, but converses a lot of first timers we saw plant 40 or 50 or 100. And they get like three acres in before they realize that there's no way they they're out of space to put it in. They don't have enough labor to keep getting it down and it's all starting to rot. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we're trying to get people away from. So whether it's, you know, having your own drying plan or starting to work with more processors and stuff that are out there that are drying. um, It's just really, really important to understand that you cannot hang dry more than really an acre or two. Exactly. I get an army of people. And yeah. I do get quite a few phone calls from people who say, Yep, I grew 20 acres last year. I hung dried it. Never again. That's why I'm calling you. (laughs) So we do get it can be done, but it's very, very tricky and it's by no means a wild success. You know what I mean? The guys that did that will will tell you themselves, don't ever do this again. The time and the labor and the headaches. I've heard The best I heard was somebody who was able to hang dry 32 acres and he didn't sleep for four days. He said, Shauna, when I was done hang drying all of that, I went on vacation. Like I (laughs) mentally needed a break. (laughs) So it's a lot of work. It's not easy. It's definitely a lot of work. Um, And if you want to take a look up here, this is the old symbol for just really quick. Um, This is actually a symbol for ma, it's for, that's the Chinese word for hemp. And that is actually designed to look like hanging hemp. So if you see the little, it looks like a long division symbol, that is actually the shed that the hemp hangs in. And then the characters in the middle is actually supposed to look like upside down hemp drying. So I thought that was pretty cool. And this is from, you know, thousands of years ago that they decided this character. And I was just going to say, I mean, we certainly understand that, like, this time of year, everybody's focused on genetics, right? You're securing the things that you're going to need to be able to grow, and then you're going to be busy growing, and then you're going to look up, and it's going to be time to harvest and dry. And so we really, that's, you know, part of what we really preach is to get people to think ahead, because you don't want to be figuring out that out on acre number two that this isn't going to work, right? You just don't want to be in that position, so. Thank you.